from Time for Tea Designs with another video um, and card tutorial. Today I'm going to be doing some stenciling using one of our brand new stencils, Tropic Like It's Hot, and also um, our Two Can Do This stamp and die sets. So first of all, I'm going to stamp each of my images. And actually, um, in this um, video, I will be showing you two different cards that I've made um, using stencils, um, as well as the two can do this stamp set. Unfortunately, I didn't hit the record um, when I made my second uh, card. So um, I will just show you the pictures that resulted from that rather than um, the video. So. Um, as you can see, I'm stamping uh, all of the images um, in one go first off, and then I'm selecting the some of the leaves to just stamp individually. And I'm just using some different size stamping blocks and some different coloured distress inks to just colour each of those separately, um, rather than having to reposition them on my my stamping platform. Um, this is this is much quicker and because you can if you don't do it quite the right way the first time um, you can just stamp it again it's it's really simple and quick and easy to do so um, I'm stamping each of the leaves several times so that I can uh, as, at this point I hadn't decided quite what um, my project was going to look like and how many of the images I was going to use so I thought I'd stamp up a whole bunch of them colour them all up and then um, I can decide which ones I want to use in the project in the end. So once I've stamped all of my main images once, I'm now going to stamp the toucans again, as I know that I'm going to want those toucans on two different cards. So I'm using this, um, uh, sorry, Memento um, Tuxedo Black Ink, as this is a Copic friendly uh, ink and I'm going to be using my Copic markers here to um, to colour up my, my images. So I'm colouring up the two bodies first and as they're all going to be exactly the same I'm going to do them all in one go. So um, I'm using my T3, T5 and T7 so the toner shades of grey to create the illusion of um, a shiny black feathery um, coat is that the right word um so yes i've started with my lightest shade first and then working through each of those uh, those colors to build up um a little bit of dimension so creating a curvature across his head and his bottom and i'm doing the same um set of colors for the smaller toucans starting with um the darkest shade this time as it's a smaller image and then going over that with my lightest shade and then deepening it further with the T7 um, and just creating my shadow on the back of each of their bodies. Moving on to their breasts, I'm going to use a series of yellows, so a, a Y02 and then the green YG03 and YG13. And I've applied the lightest colour, the Y02 first, and then gone over that with my YG03 um, and doing the same for the beak, starting with the lightest uh, shade of yellow and then creating shadow with a darker yellow, the Y08 there. Um, just to um, again um, add a little bit of curvature to the to the beak, and where I've just uh, the colours bled over the line a little bit there, I'm using my blender brush just to push that colour back in. For the centre portion of the beak and for um, the body of one of the little toucans, um, I'm using um, this series of blues and building up that colour um, with the lightest shade first, and then. For the beak, just applying the darkest shade at the bottom and at the top. So again, that gives the illusion that the beak is curved in the middle. And then I'm using that same blue just to add the accents to the um, the other toucan. The reason that I'm doing that is because I want to uh, keep the same colour scheme throughout all of my images um, so that they will all work together and that will work across both of the cards that I'm making today. 
The next uh, step then is to add some green accents to the smaller of those, those toucans and the same process that I use um, when colouring all of my images is to go lightest to darkest. And here are the little speckles that I mentioned before just using that darker green um, just to add a little bit of texture and interest to the body of that largest toucan. And then to add a splash of colour, I'm just working through um, some R colours um, to um, add a little pop of colour to the end of that toucan. And the great thing about these images uh, is that you can go wild with the colours. So I did just Google uh, what a toucan um, typically might look like, but I realised that actually you can, can mix and match those colours and you don't have to stick to what's absolutely realistic if you don't want to. Um, that's what makes makes them so much fun. So I'm really going to speed through this part of the colouring just because uh, we've already gone through how I coloured um, the previous images and I've done these in exactly the same way. All I've done is I've just applied um, different colours for different sections, so different accents um, for, for each of the birds. So using a little bit of pink and green for the, the accents on the smaller birds and then the blue on the end of uh, the larger toucan's beak. Just again, just to mix and match each of those, but using that same colour theme. I'm now going to colour um, the hearts and the leaves and using the same series of um, my R22, R35 and R37, I'm just um, colouring up each of these images. I don't know as yet, like I say, which of these I'm going to use on my project, but the great thing about this uh, particular stamp with the three hearts, three different size hearts, is that your your dies um, will cut all of those out in one go. So they're not individual dies. Um, you'll be able to cut all three at once, but then that obviously gives you the three different sized, um, different sized um, elements that you can then use on your project. Um, and I've sped through this bit because it's some really, really simple colouring that I've done uh, done here um, using the same um, basic technique of lightest to darkest. And here are the completed images um, that I've now die cut using the coordinating dies. We're now ready to start stenciling and this is the brand new Tropic Like It's Hot stencil. I'm just using some uh, super smooth cardstock now to apply um, a base layer of colour using some squeezed lemonade distress oxide inks. So I'm just using my blending tool to apply that colour all over um, the, the, uh, the cardstock um, as a background to my stencil. So really working that colour in, going over that a couple of times so they've got a really nice depth of colour. And now I'm going to take my stencil and I'm going to line that up uh, where I would like my design to, to be. And I know that I'm not going to use all of the design um, as I'm only going to be using um, a portion of that. I'm going to cut that out and use that as a focal point on my card. But at this point, I don't know quite which bit of the, um, of the background I will use. So... I've just angled it slightly and now I'm going over with different shades of um, greens, uh, yellows and a bit of an amber colour there and just applying these in different parts of the stencil, pushing that colour through through my stencil um, in various points all over um, that background and this will just create a nice bit of dimension, a bit of texture um, and interest with those different colours. So working over each of those, um, I am, although this is speeded up, um, I am actually swapping my, um, my blender tool between each of those so that I'm keeping my colour clean and just adding a little bit more green so that that really does pop through. So now that that, that background um, is complete, I can take the stencil off and you can see just what a lovely crisp image that, um, that makes. I'm really happy with how that's turned out, but to add an extra little bit of um, texture, I'm just spraying some water onto, um, onto that uh, 
panel and using a, a paper towel just to soak up any larger droplets and that will just create a little bit of a splatter effect um, onto the background panel. So that's that piece is complete. So we can now start putting all of the elements that we've uh, we've created together to make our final card. So here are a few elements that I have prepared earlier. I've used two scalloped circle dies um, just to create a center portion for my um, for my card. And I'm going to use that then to cover up some of my stenciled background image and put that onto the front of my card base. So I'm just trying to line up where I would like that, um, that little uh, circle to be over which part of my stencil background I like the best. And then I'm going to cut out the background the same size as my, my card blank so that you won't see that peeking out. So I've just popped that through my, my die cutting machine and now I'm just looking as to whereabouts I would like each of my images to be. As I've decided that I'd like my sentiment to be in the centre of my, um, my scallop circle, I'm now just going to line that up using my stamping platform and just lining that up using the, the scallop circle itself to help me line that up correctly and then using some Versafine ink to stamp my sentiment. I like using the Versafine for my sentiments, particularly on a coloured background like this because I, I think it gives a really nice deep dark black colour. Um, just using some liquid glue now to attach that scallop circle to the, the background panel. And then the little frame that I cut out, um, I tried to find some um, foam tape that was thin enough to, to uh, allow me to add a little bit of dimension to this. But in the end, I resorted to using some silicone glue, which I haven't used for a long time. But actually, I, I really enjoyed using it for this project because it gave me that little bit of manoeuvrability for each of my images and added a nice little bit of um, dimension to that frame without you being able to see any of the, the adhesive in the background. So while I've got my, my pin flare glue out, I decided to use that on uh, my, my little die cut images as well. This adhesive allows me to put my images where I'd like them, move them around a little bit before that adhesive really takes hold. And because it dries clear, you won't be able to see any of that adhesive poking out from behind each of those characters. So I'm just applying the, the last of my uh, tropical leaves. Um, and now they're in place, I'm going to add some extra little bits of embellishment. And these are the three heart shapes that I talked about earlier when we were colouring up our images. So I've cut uh, the three out in one piece, but I've separated them out so that I can put them in the, um, in the order that I would like rather than how they were stamped. And I'm just going to position those um, on either corner, on opposite corners of the, the focal panel using a little bit of liquid adhesive um, to pop those into place. I'm now going to sort out the uh, card blank itself. Um, this is an A2, an American A2 size card panel. And I've created that using um, a die set that is from Card Magic. And, and I will link to that below, but I found this a really, really handy die to help me create card, card bases really quickly. And I've just cut out the same size panel of some yellow, uh, coordinating yellow cardstock, and that will form the, the base that I then apply my focal panel to. The finishing touches then, now that that's, I know that all my, um, my adhesive has dried, I'm now going to add some glossy accents to each of those hearts some jelly white jelly roll pen to add some highlights to my images and a little bit of wink of stella to the body of the toucans themselves and then the final touch is to add some drops of nouveau uh, crystal drops 
um, to this uh, to the stenciled portion of the background and the great thing about these drops is that once they dried they really took on the color of the background um, and really looked um, like little jewels um, in the in the background there so I really really liked how that turned out in the end so this is my card completed for today um, and like I say this is one of two cards that I created using the two can do this stamp set um, this one I used the Tropic Like It's Hot stencil and I hope you can see just how versatile that stencil could be um, for in a lot of your projects. The second card that I made is using our Unbelievable stencil and that's the card that I'll just talk you through because I don't have the accompanying video I'm afraid. So here's the card. Um, it uses two of the smaller toucans that we coloured up earlier in this video, as well as the heart stamp and some of those leaves. And I've used some Distress Oxide ink simply to apply colour through that unbelievable stencil and use that as the background to my project. I've used the toucan heads are better than one sentiment and positioned that above my heart and then I've framed all of my, my images using the scalloped frame border die from Time for Tea Designs that's available through Create and Craft at the moment. So that completes the second of my cards and again a really versatile stencil, I hope you'll agree. It's been a real pleasure sharing these projects with you today and it would be really great if you uh, wanted to see more of these videos, if you could like and subscribe to the channel and if you could also hit that notification bell so you never miss out on one of our tutorials. Thank you so much for watching today. I really appreciate it and I hope you have a really fantastic day. Bye bye now.